Good morning on this fresh, fresh morning. Okay, so as per the note that I sent out and as per what I was hoping to um, offer to you in this 11 week session is something other than physical energy, physical meaning touch, smell, taste, blah, blah, blah. Um, so food would come into that category, exercise, but there's all of these invisible forms of energy. And thousands of years ago, before there were x-rays and MRIs, um, ancient holistic systems of health knew that there was tubes and uh, wheels of energy, chakras and nadis, and you know, traditional Chinese medicine, you may be more familiar with the meridians. And these meridians have been shown by researchers to run all along the fascia. Now, whether we even know and understand all of these things, the fact of the matter is, is that yoga is truly trying to bring harmony and balance throughout the body, the mind, the spirit. And in yoga, we talk about things like nadis and the three major nadis, there are 72,000 nadis and you can think of tubes running through your body. The three majors, the one that goes up the center is Sushumna. The one that runs up your left side of your body is called Ida. It represents yin. It represents the feminine, the receptive, the cooling. Right side of your body is called Pingala and it represents the masculine, the yang, um, the uh, emissive, the active. Now, here's where it gets really interesting too, is that the left side of your body, so it starts down at the bottom, your Ida, Nadi, the long tube, can't see it, it's not physical, but um, there's an energy that it actually crosses over in your brain to your uh, right side of your brain. And your right side of your brain is your feminine, creative, nurturing, daydreaming, you know, when we have to come up with creative solutions, whereas the left, the right side of the body, which is the yang, the masculine, the heating, um, it crosses over into the left side of the brain. And we know this, that left, think about logical. You've got to figure things out, okay? The computer. That's not really creative. It, well, it can be, of course. So, you know, it, and I guess, why do I even want to talk about any of these things? Because I want you to think of your nadis and your chakras the way you would think of your veins and your arteries. If there are blockages, it messes us up. We become unhinged, unbalanced. And today in this yoga class, what I'd like to do is explore um, some of the asanas and breathing techniques. And we're going to start um, I think that, you know, we had to get here and that of course was Yang. That's Yang getting here. Now, in order to do a practice and really be centered and grounded, we want to bring some yin in. We want to balance the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang. So if we can all come to a seated posture and know that, it, you know, and, and I'll, I'll talk about this again, but let's just practice Nadi Shodanan because Whenever you're feeling, as I say, I don't know what words you like to use, but overwhelm, upset, disturbed, if you have the opportunity um, to practice Nadi Shonhan, it will bring your Ida, your Pingala, your right, your left side, right into that center, into Sushumna. And all of these energies begin down here and they climb right up your body. And I just want to say one other thing. It's interesting that the medical model where you see that staff and then you see these sort of like snake-like things wrapping around. Well, we're going to bring this in because do they, cro they cross it at the chakras. It's, it's all like fascinating. So even though allopathic Western medicine, a lot of it, this would be like, what are you talking about? Um, this stuff's thousands of years older and it does seem to correlate. So one of these days, I'm sure it'll all get married. Okay, so you're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna take your peace finger and your middle finger and fold it into the center. 
of your hand. Now, there's another option. Some people like to take those fingers and place them on their third eye. You could try either way. Try it once one way, see what you like. My practice is to fold my fingers in. And then you block right where the cartilage and the flesh meet in your nostril. So you're going to block the right nostril, your yang, your masculine nostril, pingala, with your thumb. And then you're going to block your ida, feminine side, with your ring finger. Now, having said all that, if you're really blocked, just, an, just something to point out, you take your pointer fingers and there's that little space right under your nostrils and you just kind of press in there and block. I don't know if anybody's blocked or not. Um, and I don't, I'm curious too, maybe after class we can talk about this, if you did the practice yesterday to see which nostril was more open and which one was closed. So this is all about balancing this right now. <clears throat> just to bring and try to harmonize the being and the doing. Okay, so you're going to take uh, those fingers and either fold them in or place them. And actually, before we do that, just rest your hands on your thighs. Because when we do these breathing exercises, we don't want to really change the breathing pattern. Closing your eyes, lifting up through the crown of your head. And just notice and relax your breathing, making it as normal as possible. So breathing in through the nose removes any kind of detritus, bacteria. It's a cleansing. Also, nose breathing gets more oxygen into your bloodstream and your brain. Well, if you're plugged, of course, we might feel a little dozy because we're probably breathing through our mouths. It's just not as efficient as breathing through our nose. So let's prepare the right hand by either folding the pointer finger and the middle finger inside of the palm or placing it on your third eye, whichever you prefer. Block your right nostril, inhale through your left. Block, exhale right. Inhale right. Block, exhale left. Oh, pardon me, exhale left. Inhale left. Block, exhale right. Inhale right, block, exhale left, inhale left, block, exhale right, inhale right, block, exhale left. Inhale left, block, exhale right, inhale right, block, exhale left, and lower your hand. Now that was just one round and that's all we're going to do. If you were to practice this eight to ten rounds, doing it once or twice, and just now, I just want you to check in. And you can block one nostril, because we don't have a mirror here. That was the practice to breathe, you know, hold a mirror under your nostrils horizontally and breathing into it to see which nostril was the freest flowing and how one of the, what you blew onto the mirror evaporated quicker than the other. This just tells you which side of the body is running the show. Okay, now we might be even. So block one nostril and exhale. And then block the other nostril. You can use any finger and exhale. You might find that you're even. And if you're not, there's no right or wrong here. But 
I'm finding I'm a little more even right now just from doing the exercise. That is the goal of that exercise. All right, so we're going to uh, come up to standing right away. I want to get into more of a yang practice and then we'll move into a yin. So curl your toes under. And let your upper body hang, let your head hang. The way we stand up is important. Really let your arms and your head hang and then slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, letting your head be the last thing to come up. And then inhale the shoulders up to the ears, exhale, push them back and pull your armpits down. Now, when you do that, you should feel a lift and an opening here in your um, chest area. Okay, so let us begin. I actually just want to take your feet apart. Now, twists and back bends and inversions are what activate your major naughties. There are 72,000, but we're going for the big three. So just do some twisting. To warm up the spine, often we do our cat and cow. You can slap your butt, get some energy moving. The hips and the legs are really important for moving energy through these major nadis, your Ida, your Pingala, and Sushumna. Okay, and then inhale, stretch your, Left arm up, left arm up, because I'm going to do the mirror image. Left, reaching up, 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 up. Exhale, bend. So you're bending to the right, so we're going into our, and as I say, I'm doing the uh, mirror image into your masculine left side. And inhale, let's exchange the arms, reaching up. Exhale. If you like, you can look down at your baby toe. And of course, breathing. Keep the length in your body. There's a tendency to collapse and sink the waist into the hips. Try to avoid that lifting up. Exhale and back. Inhale, both arms up, interlock your fingers. Bring your pointers together. Bring your arms right beside your ears. Bring your big toes together and keep your heels separate and activate your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Inhale, reaching up. Again, let's bend to the right side. Keep the length, keep the length. Straighten your arms if you're able. Breathing. Inhale up to the center. Exhale, other side. Keep the length nice. Try not to let the body turn down towards the floor. Keep that chest open. And then inhale, stretch up. Let your head fall back. Bring your arms right beside your head. Feel that stretch through the rib cage, the intercostal muscles. Reaching up. And then straighten up, release your hands. Exhale, fold from your hips. If you need to bend your knees to bring your fingertips to the floor, that is fine. And then inhale, come halfway up, place your hands on the fronts of your shins, lengthen your spine, press your shoulders back. Exhale, slide your hands down the fronts of your shins, bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead, bring your hands into prayer. Exhale, hands to your heart center. And we're going to begin with half sun salutations. So your feet are about hip width apart. That would be about one fifth. Ideally, you want your heels lining up with your sits bones. So not as wide as the outside of your hips. That means your ankles, your knees, and your hip joints are mostly aligned here. Engage your thighs. So look at the outsides of your feet. They should be parallel with the outsides of your mat. So kick your heels out, Inga, a little bit. Oh, you got the, yeah, 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 yeah. Right on, okay. Inhale, sweep the arms up. 
Turn the palms out, bend the knees, swan dive onto your thighs, fingertips tented on the floor. Inhale, lift your hips up. Please let your head hang straight down. And exhale, bend your knees. And inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead. Exhale, turn the palms out, taking up lots of space. Inhale. Turn the palms out, exhale, bend your knees a lot, drop your hips, come into that tuck position, fingertips tented on the floor. Inhale, lift your hips, let your head hang. Exhale, bend your knees. Make sure your shoulders are back before you sweep the arms out to the side as you begin to come back to standing. Exhale, float the arms down, taking up lots of space. Inhale, exhale, inhale, lift your hips, straighten your legs, keep your belly glued, let your head hang. Exhale, drop your hips, bending your knees, shoulders back, inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up. Exhale, turn the palms out, float your arms down, taking up lots of space. Last time. Inhale, turn the palms out, exhale. Fingertips tented on the floor, let your head hang. And now bend your right leg. Place your right hand on your left instep. Inhale, sweep the other arm up, your left arm up, reaching up, stretching up. Your right leg is bent, your left leg is straight, your left arm is up. Exhale, float it down. Let's bend the left leg. Place your left hand on your right instep. Your right leg is straight. Sweep your right arm up, reach up and stretch up. Exhale, float it down. Bend both legs, knees, and then inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead. Exhale, float the arms down, taking up lots of space. Okay, so that was half sun salutations. In this session, we're now going to, for the first time, do our full. Because it's, it's the kind of weather that we need to stay active, warm, and yet we want to be balanced, so the yin will come. Let me know if it's getting too H-O-T. Is it getting too hot? Okay, one second, folks. Coming up to the front of your mats. Of course, the heat's on that side of the room, so that would be the yang. This would be the yin, the feminine, the masculine. Maybe we should switch halfway through. <clears throat> okay, inhaling, exhale, bring your hands into prayer. Take your feet apart, reach up, look up, arc back, whatever amount you can. Inhale, straighten up, axial extension, exhale, fold from your hips, reach your hands forward and let your head hang. Step your left leg back and drop your knee to the mat. Bring your hands onto your front right thigh. Focus your gaze if you're going to lift your back knee off the floor for balance. Press through the heel of the back foot. That is your anchor. Inhale and sweep the arms up. You can always keep that knee on the floor. Activate your fingers. You're holding something. Energy. Turn your hands forward, spread your fingers apart. Make sure your middle finger points forward. Take your front foot back, come into your push-up or plank position. If that's too much for your wrists and your shoulders, then drop your knees to the mat and then lift your feet off the mat and cross at the ankles. If you wanna start experimenting with adding more pressure, then come forward with your body weight. If you're holding plank position, Draw your belly, your navel up towards your spine. Reach your crown forward. You're pressing through your heels in the back. Feel your core engaging. 
Pressing all 10 fingers into the mat. So the feminine sometimes needs to increase their strength. And the masculine sometimes needs to, and strength, I don't mean just physical. I mean it in every sense of the word. And sometimes the masculine has to increase empathy. Release your knees to the floor. Flatten the tops of your feet so your toes are pointing backwards. Leave your hands where they are and take your hips back towards your heels. Take your time because sometimes you can get cramping if you go too quickly. If bending your knees more than 90 degrees is an issue, then stay in puppy pose with your bum up in the air and wherever you're at, Try to release your forehead towards the floor. If you're in this extended position, notice the stretch through the shoulder area, the armpits. Now, leaving your hands where they are, slowly stay low, come forward. Keep your body nice and low. When you're able, release your chest and then your chin onto your mats. Bum stays up. Slide everything out behind you. Draw your fingertips to align with the edges of your shoulders and let your forehead rest on the mat. Keep the tops of your feet flat. Keep your elbows into your side body and press your forearms towards the floor. Notice the effect on your shoulder blades and your shoulders. These things are always creeping up because we're in this hunched position over our devices or just always doing something in forward flexion. So this is a good opportunity, a good antidote to getting the shoulders away from the ears and the shoulder blades down the back. Roll an invisible alley with your nose to lengthen your neck. Pressing your hips and pelvis into the floor. On an inhale, lift your head, neck, shoulders, and chest off the floor. Basically, you are not using your hands. You're using the muscles in your back. And as you know by now, this is excellent for your adrenals and your kidneys in the middle to lower back area. Keep your elbows tucked in, even though you're not pressing up. Get used to proper alignment where your wrists, elbows, and shoulders are mostly aligned. One more breath in to lift. Exhale, lower all the way down. Curl your toes under. Now you can either lift your hips directly up or you might come up onto your knees first and then lift your hips and walk your feet a few inches forward. Again, make sure you're pressing all 10 fingers into the mat so you've got space, that carpal tunnel inside of your palm. And then press your chest towards your knees. Press your sits bones towards the back of your mat, lengthening your spine and now exhale and press your heels towards the mat. So you should be feeling a good stretch in the backs of your legs. Do not be concerned whether your heels ever touch the floor in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Just feel that stretch. Lift your left leg up, look at your left hand, and swing that foot as far forward as you can. If it doesn't go very far, drop the opposite knee, Pick the foot up at the ankle, bring it back to the front, swing your back leg forward, and let your upper body hang. Galvanize your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Bring your arms right beside your ears, pull your belly buttons in to protect your lower back, and then sweep the arms in front as you come back up to standing. Feet apart for balance as you arc back. Inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead, hands together. Exhale, into prayer. Let's do one more round. Inhale, exhale, hands in prayer. Step your feet apart, reach up, look up, arc back, whatever amount. 
Inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist. Exhale, reach forward. As you fold, fingertips to the floor, let your head hang. This time, step your right leg back and drop the knee to the mat. Make sure your shoulders stay directly over your hips. Bring your hands onto your front knee. Focus your gaze before you come up into a balanced posture or stay with your knee on the floor, that's fine. But the back foot is your anchor. So if you're not pressing through your back foot, you're not gonna feel as stable. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Fingers are active. Shoulders stay over your hips. You may be a little wobbly, don't worry. More muscles, little tiny muscles are working. Turn your hands forward and bring them to the mat with the fingers spread wide apart to distribute the weight, coming into your version of plank. Reaching the heart center over the thumbs. If you find this is too much for your ankle, or your wrists or your shoulders, don't try to be a hero. Bring your knees to the mat. Showing awareness, respect, and compassion for where your body is today. Throughout this class and any yoga class you might take. Notice when you draw your belly button in towards your navel how it supports your lower back. If we let our bellies just hang, the lower back has to take more effort. Not in the right way. Drop your knees, flatten the tops of your feet, take your hips way back, or stay in puppy pose with your bum up in the air and your arms out in front. Breathing into your side and back ribs, whatever position you're in. If you can draw your hips back towards your heels and get some length and stretch through the spine, Sushumna Nadi, your central channel or tube. And then release your elbows as you slowly come forward. Stay low. Release your chest and chin when you can. Now, if we have a rounded upper back, that hunched position, you'll find this really difficult. However, if you want to correct that hunching of the upper back, then this is very helpful. It's also really great for keeping your spinal column in perfect alignment. Slide everything out behind you. And as we will discover in the ensuing weeks, having your spinal column in perfect alignment keeps your chakras happy. Lower your forehead onto your mats. Draw your fingertips back to align with the tops of your shoulders, elbows into your side body, and then press your forearms down towards the floor. Flatten the tops of your feet. Roll an invisible alley with your nose, pressing your hips and pelvis into the mat. On an inhale, let's everybody come up into baby cobra. This may be as far as you wish to come. If you want to try to go into the fuller expression, then pressing your hands, pressing the floor away from you. Don't let the elbows wing out and don't let the shoulders come up. Keep them down. So most of us will not be straightening our arms in this position, but keeping the wrists, the elbows, and the shoulders in alignment. One more breath in. Exhale, lengthen as you lower. Curl your toes under. Press your chest up, lift your knees, walk your feet a few inches forward. Bend your knees, bring your belly onto your thighs. Press your chest towards your knees. Be sure you're pressing all 10 fingers into your mat. Press your sits bones towards the back of the mat and then press your heels towards the mat and breathe. So this is considered an inversion. 
excellent for our major naughties. N-A-D-I-S is how you spell it, not being naughty. Naughties. Feel that stretch in the backs of your legs. Feel the energy surging. Earth to lyric energy entering through the hands and the feet. And then lift your right leg up and look at your right hand and swing that foot as far forward as you can. Other foot forward. Please let your upper body hang. Bring your arms beside your ears. Engage your thighs by lifting up on your kneecaps. Pull your bellies in towards your spine. Inhale, sweep the arms in front, reaching up to come up to a standing posture. Feet apart for balance. Reach up, look up, and arc back. Inhale, bring your feet back together. Lift up out of your waist. Exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees and then sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead. Exhale, bring your hands into prayer and give them a good press. This is great for reducing that carpal tunnel. Okay, release your hands. Take a sip of water if you like and then bring yourselves flat out onto your mats for a moment of absorption of all the good things you have just done. <sighs> so as you're lying down, you can close your eyes if you like for a moment. There was a question last week about this idea of belly breathing and I just want to clarify that when we breathe into the deepest part of our lungs, so the bottom of our lungs, because lots of times we're not breathing in that deep, we're not breathing that far, we're shallow breathing. And when we shallow breathe, only the chest moves. And we will see this sometimes in older people, they're almost gasping. Um, not getting enough oxygen. So when you breathe fully, this flattens the diaphragm. So when, you, when the lungs are full, it stretches, flattens the diaphragm, which presses on the belly. Now that's how you know that you're breathing fully and completely when the belly is rising. It's easiest for us to notice if we're breathing fully when we're lying down, which is what you're doing right now. So you know you're breathing fully and completely. Sometimes they call it three-part breathing um, because it's chest, diaphragm, belly. Basically, if your belly is rising, then you're breathing as fully and completely. And of course, remember the importance of your exhalation. Releasing carbon dioxide impurities, so breathing through the nose, as I said, gets the oxygen into the blood and the brain. It saturates it more than if we were to breathe through the nose. It's just a direct route as opposed to something more secure, circuitous. <coughs> <clears throat> and by the way, anybody with breathing problems, um, just the very act of breathing through the nose widens the nasal passages um, and can improve a breathing function. So, you know, people with asthma or whatever they may have, breathing exercises are extremely important um, and very useful for helping us breathe better, which clearly is the difference between uh, life and death. Okay, bend your legs and place the soles of your feet flat on the floor. Lift your shoulder blades off the floor, tuck them under your heart. Arms are beside your body and just tilt your chin towards the center of your chest. So. As I mentioned, 
in order to activate, balance, harmonize these major nadis, our hips and our legs are really key, as is our spine. So we're gonna do a reclined pigeon pose, which of course has many, many, many benefits. Uh, we'll start with placing the right ankle on top of the left knee. Right ankle on left knee. With your right hand, press that right knee away from you. Now, lift your left knee towards your chest with your right ankle on your left knee. You're gonna interlock your fingers. So you're taking your right hand through your legs, left goes around the left leg. You're gonna interlock them behind your left knee. Now, if you have some slack in your arms and you're able to reach in front of your left knee and interlock your fingers, Go for it. But if you're lifting your head or your shoulders off the floor, then you want to stay with your fingers interlocked behind your left knee. <clears throat> so this recline pigeon pose, starting on the right side. Remember, the hips are the junk drawer where we stuff whatever we can't deal with or whatever's coming at us. It could be lots of things all at once. We don't have time to deal with it. And then we wonder why our hips are tight or sore. Interesting too, as I think I mentioned, or perhaps I haven't yet today. Um, so just to keep some tension here, you can press your sacrum or your tailbone towards the floor. You don't want to go 100% here, but about 80% of your max and feel the stretch, of course, through that right hip. So researchers have shown that nadis, these tubes, if you will, are directly uh, connected, or pardon me, meridians, meridians, not the nadis, the meridians are directly connected with fascia or connective tissue. And connective tissue or fascia, we can use them interchangeably really, um, they encase every organ, muscle, bone, even nerves. And if, if we're leading a lethargic lifestyle, connective tissue gets tight, your muscles are tight, your joints are tight, and you can end up getting knots. And I think we all kind of have had those. So just knowing you can stretch these things out, practicing yoga, keep them moist, supple, flexible. So are you feeling this in your right hip? If you're not feeling it, or you can take it a little further, lift, imagine lifting the small of your back off the floor a little bit more. So that lumbar area, and breathe into this area. Okay, cross that right leg tight over the left. So your knees are very close together as if you were wearing tight skirt. Take your arms out to the side and lower both knees over to the left. So just a nice little release for that right hip, the glutes. They would be your butt, your butt cheeks. Ah, and inhale, roll back to center, uncross the legs. Once again, set your feet, and if you need to, straighten your body out on your mat. Have your legs, knees bent with your feet flat on the floor. Let's tuck the shoulder blades under the heart center. Once again, lift them up, tuck them under, tilt your chin towards the center of your chest to lengthen the back of your neck. Place your left ankle on top of your right knee. With your left hand, press your left knee away from you. So it's just a little stretch for your inner groin, thigh, and of course you're mobilizing that large Femur bone, that is the uh, longest, strongest bone in the body, the bone in your upper leg, the femur. 
and draw your right knee towards you now with your left ankle on your right knee. Start reaching just behind the back of your right knee and see how that goes. You're already probably feeling something in your left hip. And then maybe, if you're able, interlock the fingers around the front of the knee. There are no prizes for where your hands are going to be. The gift will be getting it just right so that you can release some of the tension, the tightness, and whatever garbage got stuck in the left hip. So the left side of the body represents the feminine, Ida, nurturing. There's going to be a lot that I'm offering you today, so you're not going to remember, unless you're already familiar with these things, but just suffice to say, the left side of your body represents the feminine. The right side of your body represents the masculine. No matter which sex we are, we still need some of the attributes of both the masculine and the feminine in order to feel harmony and balance within our own bodies and within our relationships. So again, if you want to stretch this left hip a little bit more, Press your sacrum, so that bony section below the waist or your tailbone, pressing it towards the floor. These are just minuscule movements to maximize the stretch, the release, the opening. So breathe into this area with compassionate awareness. You probably all heard the expression, issues in your tissues. There are, there's all kinds of things going on inside of us and <clears throat> Knowing about somebody else may be wisdom, but knowing yourself inside and out, that's leading towards what we call enlightenment. And it is more important that we understand ourselves. Understanding ourselves and accepting ourselves as we are helps us understand and accept others. Okay, cross that left knee over the right. Take your arms out to the side shoulder height and let's lower both knees over to the right side and just release the left hip, the left glutes. So it's okay to exhale through the mouth. It's just best to breathe in through the nose, as I said, to purify the air, remove in the, any of the bacteria, the dust, the dirt, whatever it is that's out there in the atmosphere. And remember, it's more of a direct passage into your blood system and your brain. And then let's bring the knees back to center and let's bring the knees up into the chest. One hand on each knee and do a little rocking or rolling, either circles, side to side, whatever feels the best. With your knees apart, taking your time, sometimes rolling onto your side into your haunches and again, helping to release what is hanging around in there. We don't even have to know what it is. We just know that yoga is always helping us release. Okay, so 
Inversions are excellent, but some of us may not be up for an inversion. Um, however, we can still invert. So have a look here. I'm going to show you, if you do not feel that you wish to do a shoulder stand today, Sharvangasana, you can use your block at any height. That's my medium height. And place it under the sacrum and just get your legs up in the air. That will still be considered an inversion, nourishing the body and harmonizing your major nadis, okay? Um, if you are inclined to attempt to do Sharvangasana, the queen posture of yoga, then bend your legs. <clears throat> and, and if you have any throat issues, it's actually really great to compress the neck area, which you will be doing here. I can hear tech guy coughing away in there. Um, so knees are bent, arms are beside your body. Lift your legs just halfway, just halfway over behind your head. Support your hips with your hands. Now, bend your knees and drop your knees towards your forehead. Maybe even drop your heels towards your bum. So you're kind of in a tuck position. And then walk your hands up towards your waist. And then, again, if you're inclined, straighten your legs up towards the sky. You might need to bring your elbows in a little bit closer for support. Every time we compress an area of the body, know that you are purging, squeezing out bacteria, impurities, waste. Lower your left leg down over behind your head. Your toe may touch the floor, but no forcing. Bring that leg back up and lower the other leg down over behind your head. And back up. Left knee to left ear. Up. Right knee to right ear. Back up. Take your legs wide apart and lower them over behind your head. Wide leg plow post. Inhale back up. One more time, wide legs, lower your legs over behind your head. Bring the legs towards one another. Bring your hands onto the floor and slowly rolling all the way down and out. If you want to work your abs, then lower both legs slowly towards the mat. If your lower back is not going to want this kind of exercise, then lower one leg or bend your knees. And then once you're all the way down, once again, tuck your shoulder blades underneath your heart center. Gently roll your head to the left and roll your head to the right. And come back to center. Arms are beside your body. Legs are straight out in front. We're going to come into fish pose, Matsi Asana. So this is a great antidote. Um, to counteract the position that your neck was just in and also great for all of us bend over our electronic devices. So you're going to lift your upper body off the floor, pressing into your elbows, and then let your head fall backwards. So you lift your chest up off the floor, you're pressing into the elbows, and you're letting the crown of your head gently land on your mat, opening up your throat. So now after the compression in shoulder stand in the throat area, fresh arterial blood rushes in to nourish the thyroid, the parathyroid, 
This, of course, opens up the whole chest area, the lungs. So if you are having um, some congestion in the lung area, the chest area, the throat, this, of course, is excellent for that. This is also considered a backbend, nourishing for your kidneys, your adrenals, and harmonizing your Ida Pingala and your central channel, Sushumna. And then lift your head up and come on all the way back down. Inhaling in place, exhale, draw the right knee up and interlock your fingers two inches below your knee and pull that down, pressing into your ascending colon. Place your left hand on the outside of your right knee. Take your right arm out to the right side and then draw your right knee over to the left side, twisting, turning, and again, releasing any of the tension in your lower back from Sharvangasana because it requires strong core muscles. Well, just being alive requires strong core muscles. So again, now this stretch may be more into your glutes, but you're still gonna feel it through your hips and your IT band, your iliotibial band, stretching from your hip to the outside of your knee. If this is tight, your thighs feel tight. It may also be affecting the function of your knee. So breathe into whatever part of your lower body here, whatever part of your body, it could even be your right armpit whatever your part of your body is feeling the most tension or tightness. Yeah. Get position. Tech guy's having a nap back here. I've just jacked up the heat a little bit. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, if you can, can you bend the bottom leg and take hold of it with your other hand? If you're able. And that will do. Release that bottom leg, roll onto your backs, Pull that right knee, bent right knee, in towards your uh, chest one more time. Straighten the leg, reach up towards your ankle. So reach up as high as you can. You don't need to um, hyperextend the leg here or lock the knee, but mostly the leg is straight. Inhale in place, exhale, pull the leg towards you as you lift your head, neck, and chest towards the leg. And then release the leg. And again, use your muscles as you lengthen and lower the leg. So this strengthens your hip flexor. And your hip flexor, we need to walk up steps in and out of the car, bathtub, Shower. All right. Center yourselves once again. Inhaling in place. Exhale. Draw the left knee up and interlock your fingers two inches below the knee. Now you're pressing into your descending colon. And then with your right hand on the outside of your left knee, draw that left knee across the body and extend your left arm out to the left side, taking it to whatever place you're feeling about 80% of your potential to stretch. When we go 100%, sometimes we're creating more tension in the body. 
So that high pitch sound is the radiators, because um, I just jacked it up a bit. Old system. Breathe into your left glutes, hip. And you may notice that one side has a little more range than the other. That's normal. And then if you're able, bend your bottom leg, take hold of it. And once again, settling. And it is not the goal, but perhaps just an idea that both shoulders and both knees are working their way towards the floor, whether they ever get there or not. The best way to practice the physical aspect of yoga is not to be goal-oriented as much as it is, obviously, to practice safely, by practicing awareness, respect, and compassion, but just feel what these postures are doing, how you feel in them, without judgment, without, no criticism, just feel, just become aware. Maybe you're aware of your quadriceps, your thigh muscles, the fronts of your thighs on your right leg being stretched. Maybe you're more aware of your left hip, your left IT band, if both of your knees are bent. Then release your bottom leg, roll onto your backs, and bring that left knee in towards your chest again, reaching your hands up towards your ankle as you straighten the leg without hyperextending the knee. So you're reaching towards your ankle, inhaling in place, Exhale, pull that leg towards you as you bring your head up to meet your knee. And of course, major stretch here for your hamstrings, but a nice compression to help release any waste that could be lingering, that may want to be released sometime later today. And lower your head, release your hands, bring your hands beside your body, lengthen your leg, and slowly using your muscles and not gravity to lower the leg all the way. Slowly back down onto your mats. And now, if you require any type of warm clothing or you have your iPad, let's place that in position with a tissue, if you will, and your iPad over your eyes. Feel good about your efforts in your practice. Have a sip of water if you're inclined. Remember sipping water throughout the day. It's always a good idea this time of year. You may want to add a little lemon in warm water, not hot. I say that because it can harm the enamel in your teeth. Eyes are closed. Separate the biting surfaces of the teeth. Relax the jaw. Turn your palms up in the open and receiving position. Let your shoulders rest on the floor. Let your feet splay out. 
and allow your body to become soft and heavy. When we see ourselves as only physical beings, then we tend to seek physical, material gratification or solutions to problems. When we recognize that there are more than the five senses, more than the physical, both outside and inside of us. And we take care with our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. We can see that the nadis are not just pathways of energy, but they're gateways to us being able to live in harmony and achieve our highest potential. Inhaling through your nostrils, allowing the flow to be natural, full, and complete, letting go in your exhalation. Seeing the breath in as inspiration, not just respiration, but inspiring. and exhaling to release and let go of anything and everything not serving us. The breath is a powerful tool. And within the category of pranayama, breath control, like a screwdriver, there are many different options for how we can use the breath to bring more calm to our nervous system or 